2020 edition is about uh, we don't have masters to the first album. And so when if somebody wants to use your song in something and you don't have the masters, or if they want to use like an instrumental that doesn't have the vocal and you don't have the masters, um, you can't license it to them. You can't do that. You can't like, let's say a really cool movie comes around or something like that, or um, you know, and they want to use it. If you don't have the masters that you own yourself, you can't license it to them directly. Currently, the only master that exists is the digital, the full digital mix that came out um, in 2000. There are no multi-tracks. So if somebody wanted to use the drums for something or somebody wanted to use the guitars for something, they don't exist anymore. So we're recreating that sort of precious thing from back then. I should say it's important that even though we have the penultimate multi-track masters we can't use them to do direct licensing ourselves because they belong to sony mm -hmm. so um they're incomplete they're not quite as good as they should be we're recreating them so that we can have our own complete set of masters that we can use that we can license to people that we can send to be remixed or give to you know another artist to incorporate into their music something along those lines we can't do that now so that's why. And there's one more reason. Um, lots and lots of the old masters from the 90s, early digital formats are getting lost because those, the playback machines are no longer built and the, the tapes that they were on are no longer viable because they fall apart. And we wanted to make a version of our record that was future-proof. So now it's on, it's on DSD, it's on Sonoma DSD, and it's on Pyramix DSD, which is a future-proof format. So... Um, that's that's an exciting thing to be able to have. Um, what makes it future proof? The fact that it's DSD is a one bit resolution is really high uh, resolution, higher than way higher than CDs. It's as high as analog. It's essentially analog resolution without the hiss. So, um, you know, there isn't going to be a format that comes along that's more resolute than than this. That's going to make it obsolete. It won't be obsolete. I still like the music, so it was really enjoyable process to recreate the the versions at the same tempo and the same timbre and the same colors that we did back then. Uh, revisiting that material because we have the penultimate masters that are missing some um, that are missing some vocals and some other things. Um, comparing the old ones to the to the new ones was really interesting um because of the decisions we made along the line and why we made them and then like there's some things where it's like oh i know why we did that that was a really good idea let's do that again and then there was other stuff where i was like oh i know why we do we did that it's because we couldn't do this now let's do it now that we can do it let's do this instead what was the original intention so like all these memories of the things that you 20 years ago you thought about so intensely more than 20 years 25 years ago I started thinking about this record and from for those first five years before we actually recorded and released it all of the stuff that went into it all those puzzle pieces I thought about them and thought about them and thought about them and once you record it and it's in the can and then they send it out to the world you kind of like you forget about what led to all that and recreating it you have to remember what led to all that and that was a really interesting process it brought me back into like it was almost like being young again or something like the thoughts that you had are are still in there you don't access them all the time but they're still in there somewhere and then you go oh my god and i ha you had that thought again and you're like oh that's why i was because i was liking that i really liked that tom petty song and i wanted to like see if we could do our version of that but with not with their clean guitar sound but with our nasty guitar sound and like all those little pathways that led to what people um you know discovered you with are uh, were kind of forgotten until now no sometimes it's a little bit sad sometimes it's proud like i'm proud of the fact that we worked so hard back then and accomplished something kind of weird um and quirky but like not like anything else and going through the process of recreating it it's hard because it's not like anything else so kind of like it's like we put together these different disparate elements of like james taylor's acoustic guitar sort of hip-hop drum beat um that changes into a 
rock and roll drum beat, um, the uh, electric guitars that are more like, you know, sort of big metal fuzz overdrive guitars, and the vocal was really kind of clean and simplistic, not affected, um, and a couple of weird keyboard sounds and things. All these weird disparate elements that we, that over the, over the five years of designing the album, we finally put together, they work together still, and you have to refine them. They're not, like, you can't, there's no plug-in with the Teenage Dirtbag guitar sound on it. Like, that guitar sound is a combination of an acoustic Martin guitar with a certain pickup going through uh, a, a, an early 90s or mid-90s uh, Sans Amp PSA-1 preamp on a certain set of settings with a certain output volume that hitting a Joe Meek preamp of a certain age. Like, this stuff is not plug in you know? Um, and having the tools, acquiring the tools or reacquiring the tools or having the tools or f getting them fixed so that they work again, to recreate these sounds is like, is, you know, it's awesome. It's like, it's like a, I don't know. It's like, um, it's like we built a, we, it's like we built a forge and we fired it up again. That's what it feels like. It's cool. Teenage Dirtbag was done separately from the album when it was mixed. It got its own mix. It got its like own unique attention up front. So it was the first one to get mixed. And then after that, it was the other songs were mixed very quickly and they didn't get the unique attention. And I think that that might be what's going on with our first record that there are some really interesting sounds that are there but that don't don't come they don't come up to the top they don't flourish and i'm excited about using dirtbag as to create the assembly line where these sounds can flourish and then running all the songs through the dirtbag filter one at a time to make them all flourish that way um, that's going to be a bit more of a creative process because while we are recreating Dirtbag to the best of our ability, as close to the album as we can, but then sort of abandoning the album for the sake of the emotion, we're getting a bigger recording. It's more detailed. It's cleaner. It's, uh, it's a little louder. It's, it's more sort of like um, intimate, like in your face, kind of you feel closer to the record. You feel like you're inside the room of us playing. Um, once... Once we're finished with that, which I think is today or tomorrow or some, like you know, very very soon, uh, that whole assembly line will be utilized for the rest of the record. So it's this super cool feeling of like, okay, we're finally gonna get to give the dirtbag treatment to the other songs. Same as original track listing, only a little respect is replaced by pretty girl, and. Punk ass bitches replaced by I'd never write a song about you. That was the original intention. And then we were asked by our AR guy halfway through after we delivered the record to record a little respect. And then, or actually during, it was during the uh, recording process. We had Pretty Girl. We recorded Fair with a Friend for the first album too. I never told anyone. You know, do you know that? That Matthew and I found the original Fair with a Friend on, on the Masters? Anyway, Fair with a Friend was recorded for album one. So there were, there were 13 songs recorded for album one. Actually, 14 if you count Freak On, because Freak On was recorded for album one as well. Well, I can say one thing about the additional songs mm -hmm. that they are songs from over the years that sounded like they belonged on album one that we never recorded because they sounded like they belonged on album one and we didn't have a place for them. From, they're from over the last two, two or two, one and a half decades. They're from this. To be honest with you, I'm not even sure where some of them are from. I just know that they're from over the period of time that we've been mm -hmm. working and that's their... They all have that album one color, that album one vibe, and none of the other albums have any of that. Bye, puppies.